Well, it's a whole list of projects because my group is uh, doing uh, a variety of things. Uh, um, and I'm not involved in all of them uh, to the same uh, depth. But uh, a project which I'm personally very much involved in is, is uh, uh, setting up now um, is, is the uh, self-assembly of amino acid polymers produced by living cells. Uh, they're not polymers in the, uh, uh, the they're not natural proteins, uh, but they have been uh, synthesized using the genetic code, so in, in that sense they are, could be less than proteins, but I consider them as biosynthetic uh, amino acid polymers. So I also call them uh, uh, biosynthetic polyamides uh, uh, to connect to the polymer community. And these polymers uh, have uh, rather unusual properties in, as, as known from proteins that they can fold, but if you make them give them a more regular appearance, a uh, more regular sequence, um, you, you can actually make blocker polymers and, and uh, uh, multi-blocker polymers with all sorts of uh, uh, functionality uh, added in and, and uh, uh, built in. And they can uh, self-assemble into uh, fibrils and, and little balls and networks and uh, all, all sorts of shapes and this is the area that polymer chemist by training and uh, I, I was amazed by how well nature could actually make polymers much better than any polymer chemist in the lab you know, with, with uh, uh, standard glassware could do so uh, I said well I, I don't know how it works so I want to talk to a uh, to a biologist or a, or a biotechnologist actually so I started talking to someone and said, yes, we, we're doing this. We're making uh, polymers that are uh, not natural, but which have been inspired by natural polymers, but they're produced by yeast cells. So, okay, can we work together? Because I'm interested in the physical chemistry of the polymers. And uh, this is, I was looking for a polymer with particular uh, uh, special properties with charges uh, in some places and not in other places. And, and uh, making that would seem to be a, a real hurdle by standard polymer chemistry techniques. And then uh, I got across this and okay, this is the way to do it. And uh, then I was hooked up. And so I started out with a colleague, uh, uh, with one PhD student, one project. And that has quickly, uh, say, uh, fanned out to six students and now we will go to ten uh, so it's, it's really uh, well, something that develops extremely fairly rapidly. Well I feel that a, a topic that uh, is, is very much um, hot at the moment is everything related to mixtures of polyelectrolytes of opposite signs. But there's a lot of fundamental questions there that we need to address as a soft matter community. How do these oppositely charged particles in and, and molecules, polymers, in, in aqueous solutions, how do they, how do they act, interact? Uh, what determines the strength of the interaction? Uh, can we describe this by theoretical tools? You know, how well can we do that? Uh, what is their dynamic properties, etc.? So this is an area that I'm also in fact active in and you can actually exploit it for also creating new objects and new complex uh, objects and systems. My group actually started out is, is well, traditionally was a college science group, college and interfaces. But if you go back in the history of college science and you read the books by the famous Dutch uh, school of college science, that actually covers not just particles uh, and their interactions, but it also covers uh, polymers, gels, uh, surfactants, uh, and everything. Uh, so there's two volumes, uh, college science one and college science two.
and actually these two books cover all these areas. Uh, over the years, collects have been more and more uh, say, uh, focused on particles. But I feel that all the other things also belong to it. But nowadays, the term soft matter has come up to cover this, uh, so the, co the collective behavior of these systems consisting of particles or particles plus polymers or polymers plus surfactants or what not and we have all this this whole field of complex systems of nano-sized objects that is essentially what is covered by soft matter and so it's easy for me because this journal takes that all and I don't have to think, oh, well, this, this system is dealing with surfactant, so I need to send it to a surfactant journal, or this system is deals with particles, so I need to send it to a colloid journal. Uh, it, it all fits in soft matter. And particularly, I feel that soft matter also is the, the, the approach where not just uh, say empirical results are collected, but uh, we try to understand what happens in these complex systems, which means there's always a mix of theory, pretty advanced theory even in many cases, and, and, and experimental observations. And they, if they go together, that's for me is the, the, the true spirit of soft matter science. So that, the journal does that an excellent job, and I had, I think, 11 papers last year in soft matter. Hard to tell. <laughs> I've been a scientist all my life, so I haven't really explored many other uh, ways in life. But uh, before, I actually, uh, uh, um, right after my, my first uh, degree in chemistry, I considered being a physician. So I, I considered going to take uh, doing a, a music conservatory. But then I realized that uh, as a musician, you have to be very, very focused. And I just had too many interests. Okay. And they would never be a success. So I, I chose to be a happy amateur rather than a frustrated professional. <laughs> but one scientist that I had, uh, had uh, personal contact with, uh, who passed away already, but was a great example for me was Pierre Gilles de Gênes. He was a French uh, physicist. Um, I had the luck to work in his lab in, in the heart of Paris, uh, where, uh, where there was a bunch of people dealing with several problems, uh, several uh, systems uh, related to surfaces, polymers, etc. And he would always have very sharp, make very sharp observations and come up with very original ideas and well, well, he, of course he got the Nobel Prize so it was not for nothing but this, this was really uh, a way of doing science that was completely novel to me uh, and which was very inspiring. Yeah. Well thank you very much for your time.